so I am going to make a video showing you how to make an animated GIF from a video file using uh, Adobe Photoshop. Um, this is for my students, but if anyone else finds it helpful, rad. Okay, so I have um, made a video file that's just the scene I want to make a GIF out of. Um, if you're trying to use a much longer file, um, it's more annoying. So I would just get yourself a, trim yourself a clip that is just the scene. You don't have to be super exact because we can take out specific little frames at the beginning and end and all of that. Um, but this is, what, a 13 second video of vaguely this scene. And I want to make a GIF of that. So, um, I've got Photoshop open, and you don't actually need to have a, a, a new project open for this, um, but you want to go to File, Import, Video Frames to Layers, and then that'll open a dialog box, uh, and then I'm just going to navigate to where the file is. Cool. So then I'm going to select this video, click open, and so uh, instead of doing from beginning to end, because it's not exactly the whole thing that I want to make into this GIF for sure, um, I'm going to click selected range only, and then I'm going to use this playhead, and these little brackety things to select roughly the part of it that I want. Call that good. Again, we'll tweak it once we're in here. Uh, and then I'm going to limit to let's say every four frames, rather than getting all 24 or 30 or however many frames per second uh, your video is, um, you're going to get every four or every two or whatever. Um, unless you have a super complicated movement that goes really fast, probably don't need every frame. I'm going to click OK. It's going to think about it for a bit. All right, and now if I go window, timeline, scoot this up a little bit. So now you can see all of those frames I was talking about are each in a layer. And now they're also all in this timeline. And each moment in the timeline, one layer is visible. And so you can see comes uh, it like goes that way. Um, however, this is really big. We've got what 77 layers here and 77 frames in our timeline. So I think we can do some trimming. So if we look at it, we press this little play here. Uh, let me uh, zoom out a little bit so that you can actually see the whole thing. Okay. So so we can definitely take some of the beginning and the end out here. Um, to have a nice flow to this GIF when it loops, I am going to include the cut to Harrison Ford, but I'm going to just have it for a moment, like I'm going to take it out before he looks away. So let's, let's stop it here for now. So to delete a single frame, I'll have that frame selected and then I hit this little garbage can. Yes. Um, to get multiple, I'm going to select one, hold down shift and select another. Delete. Yes. Cool. Let's go to the beginning and see where we want to start it. 
probably when she actually starts speaking, just before. Let's go there. Take these out. See how that looks. So this is a little too fast right now, but I think this is the content we want. So to change the speed, change the speed of one frame, um, you click it like that, uh, and you select a time. Select multiple, again you click one and then you hold down shift, and click the other, and then you can change one of them, that change all, changes all of them. Let's try point two. So right now this looks a little too slow, but um, there's probably a lag here um, because often your your GIF will pay, play back uh, a little bit slower in Photoshop um, than once you export the final result. So maybe let's try this and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so if we want to save this with all of the, the layers and all the timing and be able to make changes to it and come back to that, then we want to save it as a Photoshop file. Be tired. Uh, PSD, so that way we'll have all of this saved. And that way, if because we're export, about to export a really big GIF, because this is still too large of one, really, in case it freezes and crashes uh, while we export, we still have this Photoshop file to come back to. So we don't have to start all over. Um, so, file, export, save for web legacy. Uh-oh. I'll quit this just to give a little more juice. Come on, buddy. All right. Hmm. There we go. Okay. Right now, uh, first thing we want to do is make this much smaller. Um, so let's say 600. Just gonna think about it. Oh right, I still have this on a bunch of wacky settings. Right now, um, we're in this save for web preview window. And um, so this is what it looks like in the original. That's the Photoshop file this is what we're exporting as. So obviously we we're going to change some settings from what I had it before. Um, so there are some presets here, but I wouldn't mess around with them. I would like to do things manually. So um, first off, we resize it. Um, second of all, let's bring this back up to 256 colors. And then we're going to take, make sure lossy is at zero. Um, so those are the big things that make will make it look kind of weird. And so then there's a few different options for um, basically how it reduces all of those colors to 256. And these are the 256 we're working with. You could change any of these individual ones by clicking on them. But there's also a couple of different kind of algorithms for choosing what those colors are. And often, right, some will uh, look better than others. <laughs> so if we look at adaptive versus selective versus perceptual, I feel like adaptive looks the nicest. So we can see here what our file size is, or will be once we save it. It's still quite big. So maybe we can get away with being a little bit lossy 
And you can see it already starts to look like garbage. The file size goes down, but it starts to look really bad really fast. But maybe if we hit it like at like a three. It's not like really a significant difference there. Let's play it and see. That's exciting. And the amount of dither also affects the file size. I think in this case, I don't think we're getting a significant difference here. So let's just kind of put it here. Maybe we'll make it a little bit smaller. Let's go with this. And again, we want to make sure the looping is set to forever. And again, this is going really slowly, but I'm pretty sure that's the computer being mad at us. So let's save it and see how that looks. So we hit save. I'm going to navigate to my same folder. Okay. Make sure it ends in GIF, obviously. Save. If you double click this, it's going to open in preview if you're on a Mac. Um, preview does not know how to open animated GIFs. It'll get give you all of the individual frames as separate images like this. Not helpful to us. However, if we click it and press spacebar and use the finder preview, then finder can understand it as a GIF. So I think what we want to do here is um, maybe speed up the Rachel talking uh, section because it, does, it doesn't quite feel like it's at um, speech speed. Um, but the Harrison Ford cut looks a little fast, so maybe we'll keep that the same or even make it a little slower. So I've selected just those, and then selecting these, and we're going to do point 0.1. And maybe to make the export a little bit easier here, uh, I'm going to change the image size for everything. Um, just to make it a little smaller. Okay. Because we're working with like a lot of big images here, so my computer is extremely cranky. Um, and then we view 100%. Still a decent size. File. Export, save for web, legacy. See, that was not as bad. Um, okay. And I think we'll make it smaller yet again. Mostly just to not have a huge image size. Right, this is all the way that it was. Yeah, some places will limit your file size for a GIF uh, to under one, but I'm not going to worry about it right now but know that you can make it lossier or make it smaller or go to fewer colors and there are some things you could do to make that look a little better but that's a little more complicated but for now we'll just save it like this so we go save save retired two save and now let's look at it I think now I do want to take out that last frame, but I'm just being fussy. But um, yeah, basically that's the idea. Um, so say I wanted to make edits on individual frames here. Um, I could, I want to play this and then stop it where I, wherever it is that I want to change it. So see that this is the layer that's on at this point in the timeline. Now that I'm on this layer, I can make edits. Like I could do that. I 
could go here and then I go to this layer, I could do this. So now you see me play it. The melty face happens. Cool. And you just want to make sure that you have the right layers visible, the right layer visible at the right point in the timeline. Um, so when they get that gets out of whack, you start getting um, like if this one was on, but then also this one was on here, then you're only going to see the top one. So that'll mess up your sequence. So just make sure that you keep it uh, with the right layer visible and only that layer. Cool. Those are my thoughts. So now we have this GIF. Um, so I'm not going to export it yet again. Um, and then we can put this on the internet for a while. Woo! Okay.